Okay, so afterwards, make sure everybody spends some time. If, and if there's other people here you don't know or you're not remembering their name, don't be embarrassed to admit that. Just ask for their name. Let's get beyond some of those things and, and uh, work together to build up the body, go through those <coughs> things, and let's go on. Okay? We were talking a while ago about uh, different things. One of the things we were talking about that passage where it talks about add to your faith, and we were talking about how we're going to come back to that. And, and, and I'm hoping here at the fellowship that we can move to eventually get the place where on a once a month basis we can actually do some teaching rather than just a, a Sunday service. So that people can come by and we can have a discussion and we can talk about scriptures and what they mean and how it fits together and we can uh, because Christianity isn't just about this thing that sort of falls together like yeah God's reached into your life and he and he's called you and he wants to do great things and he started that process he's always there for you and he picks us up whenever we fall but there's certain things in the Bible that we need to talk about and today what I was hoping to do was to share with you some of those things not in a lot of detail but just some of the basics because they're going to be the foundation of some of the teaching that we're going to do Okay, moving forward, and, and so I, I was going to start in James chapter 1, starting at verse 19, so if you have your Bible, that's where we'll be to start. And the reason we're starting there is the, it's the passage that talks about being a doer. Oh, yeah. You know, when I, when I was a kid, I remember, I remember as a kid watching Romper Room. Anybody here ever remember watching Romper yeah. Room? Remember, yeah. and there was a lady, and it was always, she'd get this little mirror thing out, and yeah. she'd say, now I'm out there watching, who's watching today? And she'd start calling out some names. Oh, I see, I see Neil's here today. Oh, Neil. You know, and, right? And, and she would say, and, and then they would go to this thing, and it was called, so do be a doobie. Do you remember that? Yeah. And, and, and that's really what we're talking about today is that if you're going to be a Christian, you have to learn to be a doobie. Okay? And so don't be ashamed if I go back into the romper room mode or something there. It's nothing personal. It's just I'm my back. Okay? And so we're starting in James chapter 1, verse 19, and it says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren. It's great. He's not coming to us to yell at us. He's not coming to us to exhort us in a negative way. He says, look, guys, we're in this together. Okay? Let every man be swift to hear. And this is really where we need to start our practice. Swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to rot. Right? How often have you been somewhere at the church meet, especially at church meetings, and somebody says something, and you go away, and steam's coming out your ears, and you're right ticked because they said something about you, and oh, how dare they say that? And, and that was not their intention. They probably weren't even talking about you, but that's the way you took it. And, and so I'm never, I'm never going back there again. But that's it. I'm done with that. I'm done. Right? And the body of Christ is made up of those kind of things. And so God's telling us, look, we have to work stuff through. And if we're going to work stuff through, we have to be quick to hear and slow to speak. Right? In other words, let's not react. Let's think about what we're going to say and why we're going to say it. And speak the truth in love. Amen. Okay? For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. And then comes this interesting passage. Wherefore, and it's hard to even say, Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. Uh, can I do that again? I can do that again. Lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. What does that mean? Well, that would be part of the teaching. Yes. The verse is uh, James 1.21. Okay? It, it just means that it's not speaking specifically of specific sins, but just there is a tendency in the human nature to gravitate back to our lowest common things. So oh, yes. filthiness, you know, it starts with a joke, it moves to a coarse joke, yeah. it moves to a rude joke, it begins to be, and it, and it gravitates downward instead of gravity. And, and the thing that God, as we're going to go through this, we're going to talk about is the effort we have to make is to move against the grain. Okay? The crowd may be pulling one way, you as an individual. And, and, and on that, I want to say something as we start. The Bible is not written to groups. He does address the churches in there, but it's to the saints at. The Bible is for individuals. Okay, the Bible is not a, a game plan for the local government, how they should operate. The, the, the Bible isn't written to be um, 
uh, something that a church program. The Bible is written so that each of us in our relationship with God would learn how to hear from God and to be led by His Spirit and to walk it through. Okay? And we're going to see how that works. Okay, so where, wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. You know, um, it's, there's a true saying that if you have a crowd of dogs around you, you throw a rock in there, it's the dog that got hit that yelps. Well, it's the same with the kingdom of God. When the Bible is, is read or when the word goes forward, it's usually the person who, who, who has a big issue all of a sudden that speaks out so loudly about it, right? Um, you know, it, it doesn't matter what, what, what it's talking about, is all of a sudden we, we all have a sore spot. We all have an area where there's things that are, we find difficult or we're uncomfortable with. And so when those things come up, it's like, oh, the pastor's always preaching on that. It's always my stuff he's preaching on. You know, uh, um, and, and that's just because when stuff comes out, we have a sensitivity to that because of certain things that have happened in our life. Okay? And so we have to weather that storm. We have to say, hey, you know what? Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. But let's just weather it out and see how it all works out in that frame of things, right? Because remember, we're going to see how that one of the things that God wants us to add to our faith is patience, right? We need to be patient. Patient. God wants to do a work in us. And then it says, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. It's interesting. See, it's, it's not me that you're hurting. Except for you might not be here next Sunday, right? And that would be hurtful in the sense that we would miss you. Uh, but it's, it's be you doers of the word and not hearers only because we deceive our own selves when we do that. Right? Because we think, oh, I heard that. You know, we've been talking about the danger of inviting people to church who have no understanding of the things of God at all. Because the danger is they hear a little tiny bit of it, they don't understand it, and then somebody tries to go farther in their walk with them and talk to them about it, they say, oh, I've heard that, I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, I went there, they were a bunch of kooks, right? Because they don't understand why this stuff was happening, right? So until someone is born again, until someone has a relationship with God, the things that we're talking about are, are, are like speaking in another language to them. And so they go, I, I, I don't think I want to spend my Sunday mornings there. With, ah, like, I, you know, I could sleep, I could do this, I could do that, right? And so if we're going to, and it's the same here with us, is that we, we need to be careful that we don't become just hearers, never really absorb what we're talking about. We just hear it. We say, oh yeah, I, I heard that before. Yeah, I, I heard about giving. Yeah, I heard about forgiveness. Yeah, I heard about, uh, you know, the, dealing with this and that thing. Until we become actual doers of it, we deceive ourselves and think that we have attained to that level when really we just heard about it. We haven't done anything about it. Right? For if we be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he, uh, if, if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man who looks at his face in a mirror. And he beholds himself and he goes his way and straightway forgets what manner of person he is. You know, you're, you look in the mirror, you get yourself all ready to go out, and you go downtown shopping, and you walk by a store, and you go, who's that? Oh, that's me. Oh, I didn't know who that was. You know, that's what he's talking about. That if, we, if we do that with the Bible, that's what we're doing to our spiritual essence, we're not recognizing and seeing who we really are. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continue with therein, not being a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Now if I were to say to you today, how many people here want to be blessed? How many people here want to be blessed? Okay, now if I were to say that I'm running the Powerball here today, and you're going to get 2.14 million, you don't have to buy a ticket, it's not gambling or anything, we're just going to give it to you. How many people want it? Yeah, you want it. And the thing is, we all want the good part of the walk with God. We all want, you know, we talk about, I want the peace that passes understanding. You know, I, I tried to go to bed last night to go to sleep, but I lay there and my mind was just going and going. If only I could have the peace that passes understanding. Right? You know, oh, gee, you know, when the bill collector came to the door, I, I said to him, you know what, buddy? The Bible says that God shall supply all my needs. So you talk to him, okay? Uh, that doesn't work in the real world, does it? No. I mean, and, and, and we want those things to be real in our life, but to get there is more than just coming to a meeting and saying, I believe in God. And unfortunately, that's the truth. And if I don't tell you that, then I would be remiss in my responsibilities. And, and, I, and, and I want you to understand, I'm not saying it to you, I'm saying it to you as I partner with you in it, because I'm going through those things myself. Right? 